grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're continuing in our Putting It All Together sermon series to focus on how to put our faith into practice piece by piece, or if you prefer, body part by body part. And today we're forging ahead with the Christian mind. Before we figure out what to do with the rest of our body, first we have to get our head straight or get our head right. And that those phrases, get your head right or get your head screwed on straight, they, they mean don't act too quickly and then make a mistake. Figure out first what you're doing and how to do it before you start act acting like a darn fool. Last week we learned we're to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, so we're looking first at the brain that controls the rest of the body. It makes sense to start with the central nervous system because it's through our brains, obviously, that we control our hands, feet, eyes, and all our members. Now, this week, some of you probably know, I'm sure, the NFL has started up and the Bengals are breaking in a new rookie quarterback, Joe Burrow, and Bengals fans are hoping that Joe Burrow is that exceptional talent that will lead the Bengals to, I don't know, at least three wins this year. However, rookies often struggle, especially at the quarterback, because you have to understand what you're doing before you do it. And operating at a really high level as a professional at quarterback, that can be a challenge. It's a thick NFL playbook with a lot of moving parts. We'll see. Time will tell. But before you can do practically anything, you've got to understand what you're doing and how to do it. So how can we use our heads in a Christian manner? Well, perhaps the first thing is that it is perfectly fine for us to use them. Math, uh, Jesus said, be as innocent as doves, but as wise as serpents. Jesus certainly was very wise and crafty in answering his opponents including uh, refusing to answer or answering in riddles or using extremely precise language or maddeningly uh, vague language. He could play mental gymnastics with his opponents and get his desired uh, result. Now, perhaps since I, I, I went to a public university, I was constantly running up against this misconception that Christians, while they were either a little stupid or, you know, not well informed or, or just plain backwards. However, I think that you know, history shows that Christianity has helped the world to take some major steps forward in, in education, amongst other things. And intelligence and logic are seen as good and necessary things in the Bible and are more often than not exalted. And so, step one today is pretty simple use your head. Uh, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8 not to be driven by the flesh, but by a mind led by the Spirit. Now, we human beings, we like to pretend we're logical, but sometimes we're not as logical as we make it out to be. Sometimes, uh, more often than we'd like to admit, we don't use our heads. And that's why earlier I had that slow down sign. Sometimes you've got to take a moment and slow your roll before you make a rash decision. It's not always true, but oftentimes making those rash decisions uh, is, overlaps a lot with making decisions of living according to the sinful flesh. Now, as we're talking about heads and bodies, a head that's not connected to a body is, well, pretty worthless, right? Similarly, our minds on their own don't mean, just because we have a mind doesn't mean that it's a Christian mind. Our brains are amazing and, you know, I hope we've established, you know, revolutionary, that we should use them. But no matter how hard you think, there's lots of problems you can't fix. And sometimes, right, our heads can get us into serious trouble as well. And being smart in the Bible isn't the same as being wise or fearing God and trusting in His Word. So there's more to it than simply using our heads. We can't, it's not enough to simply say, go use your head. We have to use our head in the right way. Because while the mind is the foundation of human life, including, 
a Christian's life, human beings are not, we're not just computers, we're more than just our brains, right? So I'm sure you've had in conversations with people who are very intelligent, who know a lot, but think they know it all. And uh, sometimes when we have those conversations, right, they don't make us want to believe them sometimes. Uh, instead, we'd rather disagree often, and we only admit that they're right when we can't do anything else. Uh, and that's, you know, a more obvious example of why we can't just use our brains, but use them in the right way. Um, even if you're, it, um, more important than having a smart mind, in other words, is having a mind controlled by the spirit. Again, we're the focus of the day. I'm not trying to say that you, you've got to be, have the, an IQ of, I don't even know what a good IQ is. The IQ, a really good IQ to be a good Christian. No, it's more about how to use the mind God has given you. A head, right, needs to be connected to a body. And a Christian mind needs to be connected to Christ. More important than how much we know or how smart we are is who or what is in control of our brain. Uh, Paul talks about this reality in our reading that the mind set on flesh leads to death, while the mind controlled by the Holy Spirit leads to life and peace. For instance, uh, here's an example, a mind controlled by the flesh, when in one of those kinds of arguments or conversations with other people, is typically focused on winning the argument or gaining a point, right? Not only in, you know, those are in all kinds of conversations, uh, we often think that way. Can I gain an advantage? Can I get a point? But the mind led by the Spirit is, is instead focused on how, uh, what the, on, on how to help the person you're having the discussion with or how to come to a better uh, resolution of a problem. And when we're having discussion, and I'm thinking especially in the vein of, of trying to have a conversation about our, our faith or about Jesus, it's, this is, I think, pretty helpful if you want to show somebody the truth or the gospel. If you want to actually change someone's mind, be prepared to humble yourself. Because barely ever do you change someone's mind by being domineering or a, or a jerk know-it-all. Because human beings are more than just a mind. And so we have to, to ask somebody, see, think about how easy it is for you to change your mind and and by that I mean it's not a lot of times. When we think something, we, we don't want to admit that we're wrong. And uh, we have to uh, think about that when we're having discussions with others that we all kind of have a little bit of trouble changing uh, our, our direction. And it's good to, um, if you want someone else to humble themselves, and then you've got to humble yourself first more often than not. And I think that's, Helpful advice generally, obviously, because that's more the kind of Christians that the world needs today. Uh, the world's got plenty of arrogant and know-it-alls, uh, more than enough to go around. We've got more than our fill of, of, of bluster and nastiness in this world. What we need is not just a mind, but a mind controlled by the Spirit of Christ. And a Christian mind will lead us to be more humble people. Do you want, after all, right? In the moment, we may want to be led by the flesh, but if you take a look at the big picture, as Paul encourages us to, do you really want a mind controlled by the flesh? Because that leads to death. Or do you want a mind controlled by the Spirit? Because that leads to life and peace. Part of what Paul is trying to communicate in our gospel, or in our uh, reading from Romans, is that all of creation is bursting at the seams to express itself more truly and, and waiting for this broken world to be remade or, or fixed by the Lord of heaven and earth. And one day it's going to happen. So the question really is not whether the world will be fixed, but whether what role you will have in it. Will you be part of the resistance to what God is, the good change God is bringing about, or are you going to be one of the release, released captives? Another example, a mind by, or a generality, I guess, a mind controlled by the flesh is one that's thinking primarily about itself. It probably doesn't really care that much about others, except insofar as 
it can use others to its advantage. And we all know how this works, right? Because we're all quite capable of practiced and practiced at thinking about what's to our best interest. And it's kind of our uh, default mode or our natural sinful state. What's good for me and forget about everybody else. So how do we get a spirit mind? We're talking about how it's a good thing, but how do we get there? How do I foster the right sort of attitudes and thoughts? Well, we're told in the scripture that the spirit works through God's word. So I think it's pretty safe to say that without God's word, you simply won't have a mind controlled by the Spirit. We've got to be in the Word. And again, my main admonition to you today is not to be smarter, but to be in God's Word. Because we could use our own brain, and the world has been using its own brain and its own mind and its own ideas of what's going to fix everything. And uh, I'd argue we still haven't made that much progress on the most important and biggest problems of the world. But if we read the mind of Christ, if we listen to God's thoughts and adapt, adopt His attitudes, well, that's what we're doing when we're reading God's Word. Well, that's our best hope at making a real change and difference in this world. And you can't possibly hear from God, right, if you won't listen when He talks to you. As it so often is the case, we believe that there really is a triune God. We really believe there's a God. Now, if you don't believe in God, well, then do whatever you want, right? Listen to whatever you want, make up whatever you want, and that's kind of the attitude of a lot of our world. But our God is real. And so it makes sense to listen to Him, right? We can't possibly know what He wants if we won't listen to Him. So uh, thankfully, it's a pretty simple three-step process to hear from God. If you want more of a Christian mind, you want to hear from God, it's really pretty simple. Um, one, pray for the Holy Spirit. Pray, ask for the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus says, ask and ye shall receive. You know, if you ask in my name, according to my will, I'm going to give it to you. And if you ask for the Holy Spirit, I'm pretty sure that God's going to send the Holy Spirit to help you and guide you. And the second part is also simple. Simple. Listen to or read God's Word. Um, and I would say that includes, you know, reading out of the Bible and, and also when you have a good or faithful uh, preaching or Bible study or good conversation uh, about uh, Christ and, and God's Word and how it applies to your life. Um, and, and the third advice is really kind of reiterating the second one, but really listen and try to apply what you've learned. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you read something and you just kind of are trying to get through it fast. And, and there's a, it's okay to do that sometimes with the Bible, just try to cover a lot of ground. But as we read God's Word, I mean, think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. it don't just read it to get it done. But read as if you're listening to a, your wise parent or to expert advice because you are, right? You're listening to your Heavenly Father, to the Creator and Designer of all of the universe. Another example would... Oh, did I do this recently? Another example of, uh, of... Or one example of a prayer is one that I put in your bulletin uh, and that this isn't the only prayer, but it's one you could use. And we'll pray simply right now. Uh, uh, dear Lord, give us a mind controlled by your Holy Spirit. Speak to us as we listen to your word, and even after we're done reading it or listening to it, mold us, change us, and rid our mind to be controlled uh, of, of control by the flesh that leads to death, and give us the mind of Christ. Amen. You know, what's, what's holding us back from having the mind led by the Spirit? There's really the only one thing, and that's the sinful flesh, the mind of sinful flesh. But thanks be to God that we've got the solution. We know how to get started. And as we slow down and prepare and think about the rest, we know what we need to do uh, to hear God's word. Uh, we, we listen to him. We pray for his help and uh, as well as uh, uh, talk to him and learn from him. Now, as we're talking practical, trying to be practical, uh, this, this sermon series, I have given some challenges. Right. Um, that's our prayer. 
You know, every week when I'm trying to have some challenges. Now, it was a bit challenging to have a challenge for the mind um, because it's kind of stuff that we already know, but more of a reminder to do what we should be doing. And so this week, I, I basically challenge you to read God's word or listen. We've, got, we've put a, a bunch of resources out there, and there's a bunch of other really solid resources out there, not from Grace Lutheran, um, and, and try one of those out or read a chapter out of the Bible, or you know, maybe you're already doing that, and great. And then, if you're already doing it, I'd say, just really focus on that third part of, of listening as you read and trying to pay attention, not just doing it to get it done, but to try to get something, to hear what God is saying to you today. And the other challenge is, is to pray. Um, and again, those are pretty simple. Read God's Word and pray. They're not revolutionary, but they are really important. Um, it's important for us to hear God's Word because God not only challenges us and teaches us how to live, but He also comforts us and He forgives us. And as Paul said, the mind focused, uh, the mind controlled by the Spirit leads to life and peace. We want that life and peace and Jesus is going to give it to us. In Jesus' name, amen.